Hello and welcome. My name is Crystal Ann Compton and I am a spiritual teacher as well as an intuitive channel. And I'm really excited to be talking to you today because I'm going to be talking about one of my all time favorite subjects, and that is the subject of angels. Now, I have been an intuitive channel for many years, and previous to that, I was a professional intuitive, also called a psychic. And so it's odd, I think, that I never believed in angels. It wasn't until probably about seven or eight years ago that I finally began to believe in angels because previous to that, it just wasn't part of my reality. I had never interacted with them. I had never thought to. I mean, I, I wondered about it, but I think I ultimately decided that the concept of angels was kind of quaint kind of something that humans might need in order to feel better about the world that they lived in. And so I just never gave it a lot of energy. It wasn't until I had my own angel experience that that all radically changed. And again, that happened around seven or eight years ago, and it absolutely transformed my life. I know now that angels are absolutely real. I know it. I felt it and I've seen it. Now, angels are not what we have been told they are because we have been told that they are anthropomorphic beings with wings and they're associated with different religious systems. And while some of that is based in truth, for the most part, we as humans aren't really getting it right as far as angels are concerned. Angels are light beings. They are extremely high dimensional and high vibrational. And angels have been put in place in our reality, as well as in many other dimensions or dimensional realities, in order to be a resource for us and indeed in order to be a help and a guide for us. But it's not until we take angels seriously, it's not until we truly believe in them and reach out to them and look for them in our environments that we have an opportunity to communicate with them. And then upon communicating with them, we see the resources they are. We see the infinite power of these magical beings and we can start to work with them. We can start to ask them to be involved in every aspect of our lives. And I've done this and I involve angels. I sometimes think they must get a little tired of me because I ask them to give me input on just about everything. The food that I eat, the clothes that I wear, the clients that I see, and so on and so forth. They help with the grandiose things like life purpose and path, but they're also there for the smaller things, those things that just bring us normal joys or normal happinesses. What I want you to know most of all is that angels are real and that angels stand by right now to greet you and to work more deeply with you. Now, there is a way to work with angels. There's a way to communicate with angels, and we're not necessarily talking about that here. In this video, I just want to go over a few things, common signs that I think most of us experience that validate that angels are indeed in our area. So let's start with the first sign. I know a lot of you are gonna to relate to this one. Angels love using numbers and sequences of numbers. They like to use 1111, they like to use 1212, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4. In fact, there are entire schools of thought about exactly what these angel numbers are and what they might mean. But what you need to know is, if you're one of those people presently running into these sequences of numbers, there's a reason for that. Angels like to operate on the periphery of our lives, meaning on the outskirts of their lives. This is where they sprinkle patterns or little evidences that they hope we will notice. Upon noticing these evidences, for example, 1111 or 111333, what we're supposed to do is then acknowledge it and lean into it and begin a conversation with the angels. Because here's something you need to know about angels. They're not bullies. They're not here to say it's my way or the highway. 
Instead of telling us exactly what we're supposed to do with our lives, they like to suggest things. They like to give us options and kind of whisper in our ear and say, hey, Crystal, you might want to consider this road over that road. And so they'll do it in gentle ways. Angels are very gentle. They're very loving. They're very nurturing. And they will use these repeating patterns. They will use these sequential numbers to just get your attention so as to cause you to lean into it and begin a conversation. So if you're someone who's seen 1111 or 222 or 333 or all these other numbers, please know your angels are reaching out to you. They're trying to let you know that, hey, we're here, tap, tap, tap. We want to talk to you. We want to work with you. The second sign that your angels are around and attempting to communicate with you is anomalous lights. Now, when I say lights, I'm actually speaking about lights that we can see with the physical eye, with the naked vision. Now, I realize at this late date that years before I ever acknowledged the existence of angels, they were trying to get my attention with these lights. I'd see these slow pinpricks of light sort of come into vision and then recede from my vision. And sometimes they'd be white in color, sometimes they would be gold in color, and other times they would be kind of like an indigo blue, which is also a color you might see when your third eye is opening, but we won't get into all of that. I didn't know what was happening though, and so I took myself to the doctor, which by the way, I recommend anybody who is encountering something that's physically anomalous go to a physician and make sure everything's okay. And so I did that and everything was fine. My eyes were just fine. And so that made me start asking questions like, well, what am I seeing and what is this? Now, once I actually began to see angels in my life and work with angels, those colors, that white, that gold, that sometimes blue began to change in alignment with or in accordance with the angel that was visiting me. So sometimes I'd see a pink light. Sometimes that light would be red or baby blue. There's lots of different color alignments and essence alignments and sacred geometry alignments and all kinds of things associated with the angels. But lights and colors are something that we want to look out for because again, this is a very common way that they show up in our environment. The next way that angels often interact with us or let us know that they're there is by giving us kind of a warm angel hug. Now, they can also give us a hug that feels very cool to us, like a breeze, but your body will actually feel electrically like something is happening or like somebody is touching you. You'll feel a warm sensation spread across the area of your chest, sometimes the area of your heart. Sometimes you'll feel this in the area of your crown or your head, like your scalp is constricting. That's often angelic and it happens when your angels are standing very proximate to you or very close to you. And it's just one way that the physical body or the physical instrument is telling you, hey, something is going on here. Now, one thing I do want to say is other types of beings also can enter into our space and be proximate with us. And the physical instrument can also sense these beings as well, but they do not feel like angels. Angels, when we are encountering them, when we're feeling them in the body are always good. It always feels nice. Like I said, like a hug, like they're actually embracing us as if they've got their wings wrapped around us. And it's always loving. It's always gentle. Again, angels aren't bullies. They're not going to barrel into our environment and push us over with their presence. They're just going to kind of whisper softly and let us know, hey, we're here and hey, we love you. So if you felt that, if you felt that energetic moving around your body, if you felt your scalp constricting, if you felt that warm sensation or that very cool breeze on your face, it's very likely that your angels are around you. The next sign that you might have angels around you or in your environment is the sound of music. And I want you to try something. Tonight when you go to bed, when you're laying down and everybody in the house is asleep and it's quiet and it's dark and you're in your bed and you're really relaxed, I just want you to listen. 
Listen to all the noises that are happening around you. Maybe you'll hear traffic outside. Maybe you'll hear crickets. Maybe you'll hear the whir of the fan. Just listen to each stream of sound and then stay with it because for many of us, especially for those of us with whom the angels seek to work or to interact, many of us will hear what sounds like a hum, a frequency, or even music. In fact, if you hear the hum or the frequency like a tone, what you want to do is acknowledge it. Don't go chasing after it because that always repels the phenomena. Instead, just be with it. Listen to the hum. And as you take it in, as you listen to that hum, you'll notice often that it begins to expand. It begins to develop and you soon hear things like instruments. Sometimes you'll hear what actually sounds like an angelic choir. This is the music of the spheres. This is the music that the angels make when they are moving around in our, not just our dimension, but in our bedroom, in our lives, in our spaces. You've got to take time though to actually pay attention to what you're hearing and what you're taking in. And if you do, you will probably experience what so many other people are experiencing, which is the sound or the music or the tones of the angels. Now, no angel sign list would be complete unless we talked about how the angels love to use little things to catch our attention. And in particular, they love to use feathers. Now, this is usually reported as white feathers, but once you start knowing who your angels are and knowing what the angels do, you'll notice that certain angels will leave for you different kinds of feathers. Maybe one will leave a cardinal feather, one will leave a dove feather, one will leave a white feather, one will leave a blue feather, and so on and so forth. But the angels do love feathers because here in this human reality, the way we envision angels is with these big wings, with these feathers. Now, I'll just say to you now that that's not actually what angels have. They're just huge columns of intense and dynamic energy, but because we identify angels with wings. They like to just leave these feathers in our environment to let us know that they're there. Now, don't be surprised if your angel friends who really want to communicate with you begin to leave these feathers in very odd places. I've heard of people who come home from a long day of work, they've walked into their apartment building, they're at their door, and there, right over the doorknob, is laying a white feather. Other people walk out of a room and then come back into the room just moments Moments later and there is a feather on the counter or on the stove or on the floor. It shouldn't be there, but it is there. See, angels are powerful beings. They can bring about what we call apports or materializations into the physical reality. And if we're open to it, and if we want to work with our angels, they will absolutely begin to do that. So feathers, all kinds of feathers are one of those signs that let you know that your angels are definitely around. Now, to be honest with you, I could go on and on and on. There are actually, I actually wrote these up. I think I have about 20 different types of signs that let us know the angels are around. These are just the little things that they do to say, hey, pay attention, we're here. We are standing by you, waiting for you to ask us to help you. And that's the thing you need to know about angels. There's a protocol that we have to activate or initiate in order to start working with our angels on a deeper level. And there's nothing that they want more. They want you to be joyful. They want you to be happy. They want you to understand what your purpose is and then to occupy that purpose. That's what they're all about. And when we start working with our angels, that's when we can really start to see our life changed. Again, I am living proof of this. For 40 some years, I did not believe in angels. I thought it was a bunch of hooey. It wasn't until I met Archangel Gabriel personally, face to face, that I realized, holy heck, this is real. And this has the power to change my life. Now, if you're interested in angels, and if you wanna go 
way deeper than this into who it is that they are. And those alignments I was talking about, the crystals, the essences, the characteristics of the angels. If you want to learn about how to create a sacred charged space so you can do work with angels and so much more, then I want to encourage you to check out the class that I'm going to be doing on August 25th. Actually, this class is going to be held over three consecutive weekends. It's going to be distributed online, meaning you go online to download the content, but I will also be guiding a live student group. I try to keep these groups relatively small because there's only one of me and I want to be able to interact with all of you. But I promise you, this is one of the most popular classes that I offer and also one of the most evidential. What do I mean by evidential? I mean evidences. When we start saying yes to angels, when we start yet saying yes to spirit and taking steps to learn more and to initiate that protocol, that is when things start to happen in our lives. Miraculous things, serendipitous things. If you're interested in taking this class and joining my live study group, then go to crystalandcompton.com slash angel information. That's crystalandcompton.com slash angel information and sign up as soon as you can because as soon as spaces are filled i'm going to have to close the doors again three weekends filled with packed with awesome content and exercises and techniques about angels that'll help you know who the angels are begin to communicate with your angels and then begin to work with them more deeply in your lives i hope to see you in class bye guys